Hi, everybody. My name is Ken Blackburn with the International Kettlebell Federation. I'm here on behalf of my friends at Onnit, and we want to talk about kettlebell training. We want to talk about kettlebells, uh, where they come from, what they're about, why they're so good. Uh, so number one, this is a kettlebell. And what makes a kettlebell beneficial? One thing is its shape. So what you're going to notice is that the weight of the bell is displaced from the handle. So what this is going to do is it's going to make some exercises harder and it's going to challenge your core and your stabilizer muscles much like this chair. And um, for other exercises, it's going to make them easier. So what that's going to do in turn is it's going to promote, uh, promote greater work capacity. Uh, in terms of where kettlebells came from, they came from Russia. And initially what they were used for is a counterbalance or a counterweight in the shipping yards. So ideally, uh, what I think happened is you've got, a, you've got a tool there in the shipping yards, you've got guys, you've got vodka, you've got ego, and then the next thing you know, you've got a little bit of competition. And from there, uh, kettlebells were born. And so kettlebells have been used over in Russia for quite some time. Uh, in terms of here in this country, kettlebells are still relatively new. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is what kettlebells are good for. Um, there's a little bit of a misconception on this, Ideally, what kettlebells are for is what we call work capacity or strength endurance. They can be used to develop maximal strength to a point. They can be used to develop muscle hypertrophy to a point. But optimally, what they're good for is the work capacity. So an example of work capacity would be lifting a 70-pound bell or lifting two 70-pound bells and cleaning and pressing them nonstop for 10 minutes. So in that sense, what it becomes, it becomes the, the bridge between anaerobic conditioning and aerobic conditioning. And so one, that's very ideal for athletes because any athlete that participates in a sport where there's a weight class, it's it to their benefit to have enormous work capacity at a lower body weight. Um, a fantastic example would be my son, Mitch. He weighs 160 pounds, he competes with two 70 pound bells, he recently did 62 reps of a clean and press over 10 minutes. If you, uh, if you calculate or total the poundage on that, um, it's going to be through the roof. So you look at somebody like a wrestling coach or any other coach that um, has weight classes, this is going to be ideal. So what you're going to get is you're going to get an athlete that is super strong at a lower body weight. And also when we think in terms of athletics, we have to talk about force. And there's two things you can do. You can either produce force or you can reduce force. So the producing force, when you do like a kettlebell swing, on the upswing, that's gonna be the force production. And on the downswing, you have to decelerate the bell, you gotta control it, and therefore that's gonna be the force reduction. So you're getting both elements. And when we look at athletes and where they tend to get injured, uh, that's where the force reduction component. So who are kettlebells good for? Uh, kettlebells are good for anybody. So what we see in terms of the demographics and the people that benefit from kettlebells could be athletes, could be everyday people, could be elderly people, could be deconditioned people. The most important thing is you find a qualified instructor who can teach you correctly so that you not only get the results you're looking for, but most importantly, you stay safe.